There is nobody who has not been happy. Everybody has been happy, but the problem is they are not able to maintain it, that's all. There are only two things, how joyful are you and how much joy do you give to people around you. Just do this for two days and see, you will become something truly fantastic within yourself. What is well-being? When do you really feel well in your life? When do you truly feel well? When you're very happy, you're well. Even if you're physically ill, you're still well, isn't it? Even if you're medically diagnosed as ill, you're very happy right now, you are feeling well, isn't it? So fundamentally, well-being means a certain level of joyfulness, certain exuberance of life. What is happiness? We can say happiness is this, that, but in terms of life, your life energies are happening in a more exuberant way what than it normally happens. Depression means your life energies have become very low and staid. Happiness means your life energies are exuberant. There are many ways of describing happiness, but only those who are happy know what it means to be happy. There is nobody who has not been happy. Everybody has been happy, but the problem is they are not able to maintain it, that's all. So, you don't have to enforce any resolutions upon yourself, just little tools to make sure that you don't sink. See, a lot of people who are doing business, they think they're keeping accounts only for the sake of IRS. <laughs> no, no. You keep accounts not for the sake of IRS, because if you do not keep accounts, you do not know whether you're making profit or loss. That's the idea of accounts, isn't it? Whether you're moving forward or backward, to know this, you need an account book. Why don't you keep an account book? At the end of the day, just check, am I a little more joyful today than yesterday? If you had done this since you were five years of age, you would have been ecstatic by now, profit side. <laughs> Became like this because you never kept accounts. One day you checked, when it became very acute, <laughs> then you see you're in a big loss. Every day, every month, just keep accounts. Am I becoming more joyful or less joyful? There are only two things. How joyful are you? And how much joy do you give to people around you? This you can keep accounts. Hmm? If you keep accounts of this, people are keeping accounts of their money as if they're going to carry it with them. The real wealth of life is how joyful you are, how wonderful is your experience of life. Joy is not a goal by itself but it's a necessary ambience for life. If you don't set this one ambience, then whatever you have is just going waste. Tomorrow, if you wake up in the morning... <laughs> no, this is not my wish, <laughs> but I want you to know, of all the people who go to bed tonight, over a million people will not wake up tomorrow morning. And tomorrow, if you and me wake up tomorrow morning, is it not a fantastic thing? A million people did not wake up, you woke up. Is it not a great thing? Yes. You don't seem to think so. <laughs> yes. Because the problem is just this, you are living with an idea that you are immortal. When I say you are immortal, you are not actually thinking you are immortal, but you are not conscious of your mortality. If you're not conscious of your mortality, somewhere you think you're immortal, isn't it? How many moments in a day are you conscious that you're mortal? 
if you were conscious, would you have time to crib? Would you have time to fight with somebody? Would you have time to do some rubbish with your life? If you knew, if you are conscious that you are mortal, you would do nothing other than what is absolutely needed for you and everybody around you. Don't think this is a negative thing, death is not a negative thing, it's the only thing which has added value to your life. If you're here forever, you would be unbearable. Yeah. <laughs> yes. If you just become conscious of this one thing, that always you're conscious that I'm mortal, you don't have to think I will die today, we don't intend, we want to live as far as possible, just you know one day I will die. Every day, every moment if you remind yourself, this is a brief life, I'm mortal, one day I will end. Just do this for two days and see, you will become something truly fantastic within yourself, just this is all. This is the fundamental aspect of yoga. The first teaching that came out was that it is your karma, that means it's your making. Your life and the experience of your life is entirely your making. If this one thing doesn't sink into you absolutely, you will not make the necessary changes. You still think, yes, I know it's my karma, but you know, my husband, what he did? <laughs> you can't fix this. First you understand, this is my making, entirely my making. The moment you see it, you have the ability to change it. I see it, but you know what they did to me yesterday? Now you can't change it. It doesn't matter who did what. What is happening within you, your experience of your life is entirely your making. This is your karma. Karma means not something that drops upon you from somewhere. Karma means your action, it's your making, it's your doing. Before you go to bed, everything that's not you, keep it aside. They may be precious to you. You think about it, your house, is it you? Oh, my house <laughs> All right, you have lots of passion about it, but all right, keep it aside. Your husband, is it you? No, that's easy, he's not me. <laughs> my children, uh, is the… are they me? Oh, little difficulty, but no, <laughs> they're not me. They're beginning to tell you if they're twelve, they already told you <laughs> So the clothes that you wear, is that you? No. The body that you wear, is that you? No. All these thoughts and emotion, is this you? No. Everything that's not you, keep it in one heap. Not physically, just do this mentally. Keep everything aside. Let me see. Every day you practice this, one day when you successfully keep everything aside that you are not, what you are will be there. <laughs> what you're referring to as love is basic, basically the sweetness of your emotion. You sit here, you could feel love about somebody who is not even here. So it's got nothing to do with anybody. It is just the sweetness of your emotion. Now is your love affair, your ability to love, is it on self-start or is it on push-start? You can use another person to stimulate that within you or you can be self… on self-start mechanism <laughs>
maybe a tree or a pebble or worm or an insect. After some time, you will find you can look upon it with as much love as you hold for your wife, husband, mother, child or dog. Maybe the worm does not know this, the insect does not know this. That does not matter. If you can look at everything lovingly, the whole world explodes into a beautiful phenomena for you. You realize love is not something that you do, it is the way you are.